Pretzel bites are absolutely delicious dipped in a cheese sauce or honey mustard. And you can make them at home really easy and use your air fryer to air fry them up. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. And today's recipe uses incredibly simple ingredients that you probably already have. It comes together quick and easy. You don't need any special equipment except for a pot and an air fryer and a bowl. So let's get right into it. This is step one. Step one is making the dough. And the dough is a basic bread dough made with yeast. A little bit more yeast is used than when making a regular bread dough because we don't really let it rise and double in size like we do with a traditional bread dough. And it comes together so easy, a little bit of kneading, but not much. So here we go. All right, the first thing and the most important thing is the yeast that you use, okay? This is the kind of recipe where you wanna use either an instant yeast or a rapid rise, fast acting instant yeast, okay? These activate a little bit quicker. They don't need to be bloomed in liquid first, so it makes the recipe move a little bit quicker. In one of these packets, is two and a quarter teaspoons. If you have it in bulk, you're going to use two and a quarter teaspoons, okay? So one packet or two and a quarter teaspoons. We're gonna dump that right in. Now, yeast loves a little bit of sugar and it helps boost the activity and helps proof the dough in just a short period of time. So we are gonna add in one tablespoon of sugar. You could also use honey. Now, if you omit that, you might have a little denser of a pretzel. So I do recommend adding in either honey or sugar in this recipe. All right, now let's get the flour in the bowl. You need two cups of all-purpose flour for this recipe. I did not test the recipe with bread flour, but I would think that you could use it if you wanted to. This is a half of a cup measuring cup. And if you're going to measure your flour right out of the container and you're not gonna weigh it, uh, I know a lot of us don't weigh it, that's perfectly fine. Just move it around to aerate it a little bit and then take something that has a flat surface and level it off, okay? This is gonna give you a real accurate measurement. Not as accurate as weighing, but it's good enough for this recipe. So a total of two cups of the all-purpose flour. If you use a different type of flour, you may need to adjust your liquid amounts because different flours absorb different amounts of liquid. And in fact, your all-purpose flour may need less or more liquid than what mine does. So I'm gonna get into that in just a minute. All right, there we go. Now, after you add in the flour, you can add in some salt. I use a half of a teaspoon in this recipe. I think it is very important that you add some salt unless you were on a real salt-restricted diet. Half of a teaspoon. Then you want nice hot water for this next step. Because again, we want to give the best environment for this yeast to start to multiply, to kind of proof and puff our dough up a little bit before we get it into the soda bath. Oh, speaking of which, let's get that started now because honestly, it doesn't take that long to do this process and we'll be ready to throw the little pretzel bites right into the soda bath. And by soda bath, I mean baking soda and water. So whatever you're using, whether you're using the Ninja Foodi or your Instant Pot or a pot on the stove, you're gonna fill it with 10 cups of water. So you want a pretty big pot, okay, if you're doing it on the stove. And turn your stove or your foodie on, sear, saute, and high because we want to bring this to a boil. Now you can add in the baking soda now, but I usually let it heat up a little bit. It seems to dissolve a little bit easier. Once we have all the ingredients in the bowl, now it's time to add the liquid, which is hot water, and you want it to be at least 104 degrees, okay? Because again, we wanna give that boost to the yeast. We don't add it all at once though, because we want to hydrate the flour, and that takes a few minutes. So what I do is I put in about a half of a cup and mix it together. Just fold everything together. All right, so take a look there. Definitely not hydrated enough, which it usually isn't at that point. So we're gonna add in another one to two tablespoons of the liquid. 
which is water in this recipe. Although, you know, I don't think there's any problem if you wanted to substitute some beer in. You would definitely want to let it go flat though, and you might have to let the dough rest a little bit longer because you probably don't want to heat up your beer. All right, now it's coming together kind of like in a, it's still dry, but you know, it's starting to bind together a little bit. Well, we're still not there. Now this is where you will make some decisions. Once you add in the three quarters of a cup, which I think I'm gonna need all of it, and we mix this up, you're gonna make some decisions of whether or not you need more liquid, okay? Because again, sometimes your flour absorbs more of the liquid. But in my test batches, I have always needed three quarters of a cup and it becomes a little on the sticky side. So we add a little bit of flour later on, not at this point though. So after mixing it together for maybe two to three minutes, you're gonna see it be kind of sticky and it adheres to the bowl a little bit. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like. All right, because that's important. You want it to be like that right now. And now, while we wait for the water to boil, we're gonna cover it with some saran wrap, plastic wrap, whatever you wanna cover it with, and let it just sit to the side. All right, I'm gonna put my canister of flour away, but you do wanna get out about a quarter cup or so, just for the next step, okay? So the 10 cups of water is starting to simmer and steam. Now is a good time to add in the half of a cup of baking soda. Now don't be surprised if this doesn't start like fizzing up. That's completely normal. Go ahead and give it a stir so it all dissolves. And then we bring it to a full boil. I recommend having some sort of a slotted spoon or like I, this is a a slotted scoop, it's pretty big. Everyone says it looks like a, a litter scoop. It is not, it is not a litter scoop, it is for food. Um, but you want something like this because once we put in the pretzel bites, the dough, they only take a few seconds and then we get them out onto a cooling rack. And that's pretty important. See, I have a towel here. I do that because when they come out, they're wet and I also like to have a place to put my slotted scoop and I don't wanna put it on my pastry mat because you don't want the dough to get wet or it gets really sticky on you and that's no good. Now, is the uh, bath or the little quick boil in the baking soda important for pretzels? I think so. I've seen some recipes that skip that step. However, you don't get that pretzel taste and you don't get that browning, okay? So this is one that was dipped. This is one that wasn't. This one and this one were cooked the exact same time and temperature. So you can see the difference, it's major. So the baking soda gives the browning on the outside of the pretzel bites and it also gives a little bit of the, that pretzel flavor that we know and love. So don't skip this step because if you do, you're just making little bread bites and you're not making pretzel bites. All right, so we are ready to move on and literally that was no time at all, like maybe five minutes that the dough rested here. What I like to do is put a little bit of flour down, probably about two tablespoons. And then turn my still sticky dough out onto the flour. Now, sprinkle some flour over the top too. Because right now, if you went to knead it, what would happen is it would just stick to your hands and it would get really frustrating for you. If you have a stand mixer, you can absolutely use that as well. But I thought I would do it without the stand mixer. Then we're just gonna take and fold the dough. And we're gonna combine in that little bit of flour. It's not too much. You just want it so that you can work with it and it's not sticking to your hands. I just do a few little kneading actions here like this. So fold it back towards you, push it back out, and wait to see whether my palm sticks. If it does, I'll put a little bit more flour there. But that is feeling really, really good now. 
and it's nice and soft. You don't want to put too much flour because we, we do want a nice, soft, airy pretzel bite. You don't want it to be too dense, so we don't want to put too much. All right, so now we are all done. The dough is tacky, but it is not sticking to my hands like it was. And all that flour that we added is incorporated. Now I separate it. So I just take something sharp, a knife, whatever, and cut it in half. And cut this half in half. And then again, and each one of these is gonna be our rope that we cut our pretzel bites from. I usually leave one of these out and I put the other pieces back in the bowl and cover them back up so that they don't become dry. This is especially important if it's your first time making pretzel bites because you're gonna be a little bit slower. All right, so now we've got somewhat tacky dough. That is important because when we go to roll this, if it was totally smooth and had a lot you know, more flour in it, it's gonna be harder for you to roll, okay? So you want it a little bit tacky. Then we just take our hands and go back and forth, pushing out as we go to make a rope that is about 12 to 14 inches in length. You want the diameter to be just a little smaller than a dime, okay? And you'll get the feel for this as you do it. So. If your first rope, if your pretzel bites turn out too short and too thick, then you know you need to roll a little bit thinner of a rope and cut them a little bit longer. Trust me, I've had to do this too. Now, if you don't want pointed ends, like let me, let me get one. If you, if you don't want pointed ends like this one, you're gonna cut off the very end and just get rid of that. That's totally up to you, you don't have to do that. Then I like to cut them about an inch to an inch and a quarter I am not exact about this at all. I just go and cut and cut and cut, okay? So some might be bigger, some might be smaller. All right, now we pop them in the boiling water that's got the baking soda in it. All right, so once the first roll is in, you'll see them start to float almost immediately. That means they are done, okay? So then we pull them out and put them onto the cooling rack and try to separate them a little bit because they're kind of sticky, a little goopy, and you don't want them to stick together. This just makes it easier to air fry. All right, time to do the next one. So the same thing. You want it a little sticky roll it out if it's really sticking you can add a little more flour but be careful with that okay because it you'll have trouble rolling them if they have too much flour on the outside and keep your pot boiling if for some reason it stops boiling in between batches give it time to come back up to a boil that is really important Now, if you see the motion of my hands as I pull these off of my pastry mat, and you could use any kind of a clean surface, it's no problem, is I'm pulling them towards me. This just rounds them out better and helps if they're sticking. So that's what I do. I just pull them towards me, round them out a little bit, and I found that this works really well. And go right back in and get the ones that are floating. All right, so when I pulled this one out, it just felt a little too sticky. Just add a little bit of flour. It's gonna be just fine, okay? I don't want anyone to worry about this. This is an easy process here. And then I'll cut that in half, and we'll use this for our next rope. All right, so once all of the pretzel bites have been dipped in the baking soda bath, we can turn the foodie off. You will notice that there's some white residue here on the top. 
That is the baking soda. It wipes right off, don't worry about it. But if you're doing this on the stove, you can expect a little bit of baking soda water, so to speak, to be around little white film. Um, I have never successfully made these without getting some sort of a film somewhere. And usually I end up with it on my cabinets. Today, I didn't, so I consider that a bonus. All right, the next step is to get set up for air fry. I'm gonna use the Ninja Foodi to air fry. Um, so I wanna dump the water, clean up here, and then we will get these in the air fryer. Now, I did wanna say, though, that if you wanted to do this process, but not do the air fry process, you can make the pretzel bites up to this point, put them on a parchment lined tray, put them in the freezer, let them freeze, don't let them touch each other, they need to be separated, let them freeze fully, and then throw them into a bag. Then anytime you want pretzel bites, you can just grab them out and you can cook right from frozen. I did a couple different batches here. They worked out just absolutely perfect. You do go on a lower temperature of 300 degrees instead of 350, and it is a little bit longer of a cook time. It was about eight to 10 minutes versus six minutes, okay? And I'll have all that information in the written post. All right, so now you wanna put into your air fryer the basket or the rack, depends on what kind of air fryer you have. And we are gonna preheat, and I do preheat on 400 degrees for this recipe, even though I only cook at 350 degrees. I like to get the pot hot and also the basket hot. So we're gonna to go to the air fry setting, just go up to 400, and it doesn't matter about the time, we'll adjust that, but you wanna preheat for at least five minutes for this recipe. Uh, I usually just let it go 10. All right, so I've got the air fryer going. It's almost preheated for 10 minutes. I'm gonna go over my technique, how I do this, but there are some different options. And what I'll do is after I'm done air frying all of them, I will let you know what some other ways to do this is, okay? But what I do is put them in just like this. I don't oil them, I don't butter them. I do that after the fact. So we're gonna get in one layer. Now, important. Use some sort of a parchment or silicone. What I found is even with parchment, you need to also weight it down. As these cook, they get lighter, they start to fly around, and you can have your parchment get sucked up. This is much safer. It's just like a silicone mat, and that's what I'm using. So I put that right in the bottom, and then place your pretzel bites in a single layer. Fit as many as you can in, but try not to let them touch. If they touch, they tend to cook together. You can go in and break them up so it's not the end of the world. You will have some that look like they're kind of exploding. It's fine. Just try to put the place where the dough is coming out on the top. That's perfectly normal. It's just some of them were in the water bath a little longer than others and sealed and, and some, you know, are just pop it open because they're, that bread is still, or that dough is still proofing, right? It's still rising a little bit. So depending on your air fryer, you'll be able to fit, you know, I don't know, 15 or 20 in at a time. This recipe makes about 80 bites. And you can stand them up on end if you want to get a few more in. All right, that looks good. Now we are gonna take the temperature down to 350 degrees for six minutes. And you don't have to flip them if you don't want to. But if you're afraid that they've stuck together, you can go in with a spoon or something and kind of break them up at about the four minute mark. All right, so mine actually kind of stayed in place this time. Usually what happens is one side, and they kind of stuck together because they were a little too close. I guess I put too many in. Usually what happens is one side will start to lift up and I'll put a fork in there. Just make sure when you're done, you don't just grab the fork with your bare hands because it's gonna be super hot but anything else that can weight them down. Look how beautiful they look. And some of them were stuck together, but just by moving them around, they will come apart. They look gorgeous. Two more minutes, and then what we're gonna do is put a little bit of butter. I have four tablespoons of melted salted butter, and I'm gonna put some of this on the tray, and then we're gonna roll the pretzel bites in them, 
put them onto the cooling rack, and then get a little salt on top. Okay, you see I just put the time back up before it ran out. That just makes it easier when I go to add the next batch. They are so beautiful. All right, so I said I was gonna put some butter down, but actually what I do is I put the pretzel bites down first, then I pour a little butter and then shake the tray. So just a little bit, maybe a half of a tablespoon, okay? We just want them lightly coated. Whoops. All right, let me get these in and then we'll put some salt on that batch. All right, there we go. So what I used was some very coarse salt in a salt grinder. They also have pretzel salt. Now you may not be able to see the salt right now because they're still wet with the butter. Once the butter dries, you will see the salt. And trust me, they are salted. But I do it over a towel because salt will get on your countertop. All right, just repeat this for all of them. And as anytime you're air frying, something, especially for the first time, your air fryer may be different. Now, I tested this recipe in the Ninja Combi, and I needed to go about seven to eight minutes instead of six. I've tested it in the Ninja Speedy, and six minutes was good in there. Um, and of course, I've tested it in the Ninja Foodie, and I've also tested it in a basket-style air fryer, and six minutes was the timing there. Always the temperature was 350, and I tried lots of different temperatures, okay? So definitely 350 was the way to go for this. Your timing may need to be adjusted based on your air fryer. All right, there we go. Now, I said I would um, tell you if you didn't wanna use butter what to do. You could use a little bit of oil on the tray instead of butter and shake them around. You could also spritz after they've been cooking about four minutes. You could spritz them, kind of give them a, a stir around, and then put some salt in and then finish air frying. That's fine too. You can skip the salt if you want. You can skip the butter and the oil because they are delicious right out of the air fryer without any of that stuff. But. I happen to be a really big fan of the butter-coated ones, so that's the way that I do it. Now, what are we gonna dip them in? Cheese, of course, but not just any kind of cheese, homemade beer cheese, and guess what? I've already posted this video, so you can check it out, you can make this, it's so easy. Three ingredients, sharp cheddar, like real, a block of real sharp cheddar, you want six ounces, and then you're gonna put some beer and also the sodium citrate, and that's the magic. This has been in the refrigerator for two days. Two days. Watch. It is magic. So let's dip it in, then I'm gonna show you the other version of the cheese. Look at that. So this means, now of course it's cold. Now you could warm it up if you wanted a hot cheese dip, but you know how cheese sits and it congeals and gets kind of hard? If you make it with the beer and the sodium citrate, it's not gonna do that, guys. Mmm. All right, now, what if you don't like beer or can't have beer? You can make the cheese the same way with water, but it's not quite as pourable. It's still, it's still dippable. Now, I'm gonna put this in the microwave for just about 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like. All right, so it was in the microwave just 25 seconds. And look, it's already, I probably could have left it in there a little bit longer. But anyway, you get the, you get the idea. It is smooth, pourable cheese. And this is just water, sodium citrate, and shredded cheddar. 
But when I took this out of the refrigerator today, I expected it to be kind of, you know, a little bit semi-solid like this was. When it just poured out, I was like, the beer! It was the beer! You could also make it with wine. Oh my gosh. Okay, but this video is about the pretzel bites. And you are gonna love them.